Before we start the video, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more company documentary videos. Please support the channel by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing the video. We're working hard to grow the channel and we need your help by subscribing. Your support means so much. Thanks again. Golden Corral is a restaurant chain well known for serving a wide variety of food to customers throughout the country. Since its founding in Fayetteville, North Carolina in 1973, the restaurant chain was consistently ranked among the best in the country. However, through changing consumer demand, taste, and style of eating, this company has now found itself struggling to exist. In this video, we'll be talking about the rise and fall of the American buffet restaurant Golden Corral. In 1971, James Maynard and William F. Carl conceived the idea that became Golden Corral after several unsuccessful attempts to acquire a franchise with other companies. Golden Corral was incorporated in 1972, and the first Golden Corral Family Steakhouse opened on January 3, 1973 in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Since that time, the company's peaked with 500 stores across the United States, with only about 100 of them being company-owned. The others were franchise stores. With such success in 2007, they had gross sales in the amount of $1.53 billion. The company had more than 500 restaurants by 1987. That year, they decided to begin franchising by licensing 55 distressed restaurants to their most successful general managers. Because of poor training, nationwide concerns about the consumption of red meat, and a shift in market shares to upscale restaurants, sales were falling. The company added salad bars to all of its locations, sacrificed seating in most, and sacrificed part of the parking lot to make additions to the buildings in others. In 1991, Golden Corral decided to open the first seven Metro Market Concept restaurants. These restaurants were bigger and almost double the size of the older Golden Corrals. They were 10,000 square feet and seated between 400 and 450 customers. These new Golden Corral restaurants were more than double the size of the old, which were typically 5,000 square feet with a capacity of 175 people. There was the addition of the Brass Bell Bakery, named for the brass bell which rang every 15 minutes to signal that fresh bread, rolls, and pastries were coming out of the oven. An expanded buffet, dubbed the Golden Choice Buffet, was also added, which had a new layout to showcase its items. The location of these new restaurants, the majority of which were in Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and North Carolina, was also a change for the company, moving away from small towns and into metropolitan areas. In 2001, system-wide annual sales exceeded $1 billion for the first time. As of 2021, there were nearly 500 restaurants in 43 states covering most regions. In late 1993, Vicorp acquired the right to a small Florida chain called Angel's Diner. They acquired this from Eric A. Holm. Unfortunately, he had also sold the rights to Golden Corral, and Vicorp was forced to pay Golden Corral $1 million to secure the exclusive rights. The intent was to convert underperforming Village Inn and Baker Square units to this new concept. After building seven units, Vicorp realized that the concept was not economically viable and wrote off $11 million on the venture. During this time frame, Eric A. Holm filed for personal bankruptcy. The company updated their restaurants to a concept called Strata during the mid-2000s in an effort to bring more of the food preparation into view of the guests. In all locations, guests served themselves, including requesting made-to-order items such as Belgian waffles, omelets, and charbroiled steaks. The most recent design restaurants are known as the Gateway Style, rolled out late 2018. These locations were created in the hopes of offering a more contemporary appearance for the interior and exterior of the building, with different layouts for the dining room, adding new food service bars and kitchen areas. Many locations offer GC on the go services, as well as delivery partnerships with companies like Grubhub, Uber Eats, and DoorDash. GC on the go allows customers to pack anything they want into a takeout container and then pay for it by the pound. Many restaurants also offer reserve parking. During the COVID-19 pandemic in early 2020, the chain had to temporarily close down most of its locations, just like other restaurants, in response to the directives for the prevention of COVID-19 that spread across the globe. In order for the chain to sustain its business and to ensure the safety of its guests, 
some of the chain's locations were reopened offering cafeteria-style dining and family-style service. Others were permanently closed. In October 2020, one of its largest franchise operators filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection and had plans to cancel at least 6 out of 33 leases. With so much food being prepared, exchanging between so many hands, and being served to so many people, it's without surprise that the chain has had some struggles with their food management. In 2003, a salmonella epidemic that sickened 23 people was traced to a golden corral in Kennesaw, Georgia. Inspectors concluded that the salmonella germs in the sewer likely originated from contaminated equipment that had been rinsed down the drain. A Golden Corral restaurant in Casper, Wyoming was shuttered after being related to a norovirus outbreak in 2012. The state epidemiologist for Wyoming recorded over 344 illnesses, including 282 primary cases. The infection spread more quickly because 31 of the restaurant's food handlers continued working through their illnesses. On July 1, 2013, a video was posted to YouTube claiming that Eric A. Holm, the owner of a Golden Corral in Port Orange, Florida, had unlawfully stored prepared and raw food adjacent to their dumpster during a health inspection. After Brandon Huber filmed and posted the video to YouTube, he was given six months of paid leave. Among the many things on offer were hamburger patties, raw baby back ribs, pot roast, and gravy. These products were still stored on the respective preparation trays, bins, and speed racks. The staff member in the video implies that this is a routine procedure and that the meals were scheduled to be served later that day. In a reaction posted to YouTube on July 8, 2013, Golden Corral claimed that the meal in question was never, ever given to diners, that the worker in the video was attempting to profit from the incident, and that the restaurant's management had been terminated. The CEO of Golden Corral has said that he will conduct a thorough investigation, but that the worker will not be fired. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know where I stand when it comes to Golden Corral. I personally don't like buffets. In my opinion, buffets are too exposed to the general public for me to enjoy the food. I can barely stomach the wait staff touching my food. Plus, everyone from the outside of the restaurant sharing service utensils just isn't for me. I know many of you have been in public restrooms at different restaurants, and people walk right out of the stall, past the sink, soap, and water, and they pretend that they didn't just do number two. Now imagine you're at a buffet, and that same person's digging around the mac and cheese that you want. Let me stop, I'm about to throw up. Anyway, back to Golden Corral, I don't know how viable their business model applies for this generation. Personally, I grew up on buffets. Especially on Sundays after church, my family and I would go to places like that all the time. However, nowadays, I just don't see the younger generation being very hype about them. Most times when I see a Golden Corral, it's mostly older people there. Also, they've lost a lot of their growth. At their peak, there were 500 locations, and they were making over a billion dollars. But now they're down to 396 locations in the U.S. as of May 10th, 2023. That's a 21% loss of their locations, which is substantial. Also, they only made $69 million in 2022, which would equate to $174,242 if that's split evenly between the remaining 396 locations. To me, this says people aren't really interested in their food. I don't know about you all, but anytime my friends suggest dinner, no one mentions Golden Corral ever. Anyway, do you like Golden Corral? Have any of you worked for them? If yes, how is your experience working for them? Do you like their food? Do you think they'll be around in the next 10 years? Please let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video as well. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.